to the gospel. And Paul encourages Timothy to pursue righteousness and godliness. Now here's what Paul wants Timothy to know. He wants Timothy to know how to deal with people. Lord have mercy. He wants Timothy to know how to address older people. He wants Timothy to know how to set the church in order 
according to the New Testament pattern. And if I had time, I would park right there, but that's not my subject. He wants Timothy to know how to deal with leadership and how to deal with the qualifications of elders and deacons. He wants Timothy to know how to confront false doctrine and how to live a life above reproach so that he would be an example to those who he was leading. So he says in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 12, he said, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers. And this is how you be an example, Timothy. He says in word, in conversation, conversation is simply your way of life. He says in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. And so Timothy had a task to do, and these are the things that in order for him to be effective in his ministry, he had to do. Now, the theme of 1 Timothy is simply leadership and organization. Y'all see, see how the dots connected here? And so in other words, he says, Timothy, here's what I want you to do. I want you to incorporate structure and develop leadership because everything else that we do well, uh, this is the foundation on everything else that we will do. If the leadership is not, is not right, then nothing else in the church is going to be right. Amen, somebody. And so when you have good leaders and good leadership, that is nothing to stiff your nose at. Amen. Because everybody's not privileged to have good. See, what, somebody could preach good, but that doesn't mean they're a good preacher. Talk, Brother Wilson. Some of y'all get that when you crank your car up. <laughs> Amen. Come on, son. And so you can preach good but be a horrible person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. And so let's define some definitions. Uh -huh. Development is growth or a process. So it takes a process to develop if, if uh, if I may use the analogy of a baseball player who, who is learning how to bat, there are some, some small details that a person must have in order, or, or, or some small details that a person must master in order to be a great baseball hitter. Now, hitting a baseball is one of the most difficult things to do in all of sports because the ball moves. A golf ball doesn't move. A baseball moves. And so in order for a person to be an effective uh, hitter of a baseball, he has to master the very small details. He has to go through a process. He has to develop his core in order to be a great baseball hitter, right? And so all we see if the person hit the ball out the park. But before he does that, he has to make sure that everything else is right before he even swings the bat. Amen. Amen. And so it's, it's a development process. And then when you look at the word core, core is the central, innermost, or most essential part of anything. Y'all follow me? So you have structure and development as the core and structure and development will be and is the foundation on which everything else is built upon and if I recall my memory brother Melton talked about a house being built on a sand and a rock uh, the most important thing in a building is not where you are sitting it was underneath the ground, which is why the Tower of Pisa, Brother Ackerman, leans to the left, to the left, to the left, because the foundation has not been structured the way it should have been structured. Are y'all following me? And so leadership and development then, Dominion Park friends and visitors, is the foundation upon which everything else in the church is built. Y'all good? Yeah, yeah. 
All right, now I got two points now, yeah, right? Yeah, come on. Lean forward, listen fast, because I'm almost done. Yeah, yeah. I got 12 minutes and 30 seconds. Let me stop that again. I'm going to add five more minutes. Right. I'm almost done. So, point number one. We're going to talk about the purpose of the appointment. And in point number two, we're going to talk about the power of the blood. Y'all got, got 15 minutes? The purpose of the appointment. The purpose of a physical doctor's appointment is to check your fitness level Amen. so that the doctor can detect early signs of serious issues that you may encounter. Y'all do know that all sicknesses does not have, uh, what you call that, uh, symptoms. All sicknesses does not have symptoms. High blood pressure does not have a symptom. You can have it for a long time and not know you have it. And you can pig out of here in just no time. High cholesterol has no symptoms. Your blood clots could be clogged and you not know it and pig out of here at any time. And so the reason for the appointment is so that the doctor can take blood from your body and all the results. <laughs> Y'all got that? All the results are in the blood. Amen. And so one of the areas, church, that's vital to your body is your core. Because your core is uh, the central, the grand central station, if you will, to everything that your body functions on. If, 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 if you are sitting down, it involves your core. If you are trying to stand up, it involves your core. When you twist and turn and when you take a bat, when you're putting your shoes on, sometimes it takes an act of Congress for some of us to even tie our shoes. You know why? That means your core is weak. Amen? When, when, when you are bending and stooping and doing everything uh, that we do on a daily basis, all these mundane actions that you and I engage in all centers around our core. And so your core is very important. So that's the physical side of your core. But there's a physical side as well that needs to be checked so that if you have early signs of spiritual issues, Dr. Jesus is able to take care of it. You can get a spiritual prognosis by Dr. Jesus and if you take the medicine that he prescribed, not twice a day, not three times a day. All you need is one uh, ounce of 66 uh, medicine per day to cure all the ailments that will affect your spiritual body. And so, Dr. Jesus, sometimes you and I need a second opinion. Anybody ever got a second opinion? See, when you, when you, when you visit Dr. Jesus, he, he gives you the right diagnosis, amen? And, and, and he gives you the right prognosis because he don't misdiagnose his children. And so in order for you to overcome a weak core and, and, and stay fit, if you will, you have to take the medicine that's prescribed by Dr. Jesus. Now, when the Holy Spirit writes your prescription, Don't look at the prescription and say to yourself, well, I, not, I got something better I can do. Amen. Amen. See, some of us are hard-headed. Amen. 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 Don't want to follow no instructions. <laughs> no. You, you're trying to get a ticket, and, and, and the ticket lady says, well, uh, Mr. Wilson, I need to see your license. Why you want to see my license? Yeah. I already bought it. Just show the ticket. Just follow instructions. Some of us hard headed, and our hard head puts us in the hospital. And so, if the Holy Spirit writes your prescription given by Dr. Jesus, just take the medicine. Right? It's simple. You, you have 66 options. Some of y'all missed it. 
You have 66 options. If you don't like Genesis, you can go to Ruth. Amen. If you don't like Ruth, you can go to Psalms. If you don't like Psalms, you can go to Proverbs. If you don't like Proverbs, you can go to Ephesians. If you don't like Ephesians, you can go to John. There's always, there, there's a prescription for everybody. We have the, the Flintstone chewy gum for the kids, amen. And we have the oxy, I'm sorry. We have the oxycodone for the adults, amen. 800 milligram ibuprofen, you gotta take that thing. Amen. And so make sure that whatever Dr. Jesus prescribed for you, that you take it. Why? Because this is a better alternative to getting the results that you and I want. It's not just church attendance, but service to the church. It's not just about faith, but these that reflect our faith. It's not just about reading your Bible, but it's about discovering the truths that are in said Bible. It's not just about fellowship, but it's about strong-hearted relationships. It's not just about lip service, but true obedience to Jesus Christ. It's not just about saying, but actually doing. It's not just about having a meeting, but it's about executing what the meeting was actually about. It's not just about saying we love Christ and his church, but it's about showing it through our actions. There is a better way to getting the results that you want. And so that's the purpose of the appointment. It's, it, you, you, it's to detect those early signs of your illness. Not second and final. The power of the blood. Now, when you visit the doctor and you take a physical, you don't always take a physical, uh, but, but you should take an annual checkup uh, every year to make sure that everything is copacetic, all right? And so what the doctor uh, does is they will feel. Uh -huh. they, I don't know what they press it for. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they press it. They know what they're trying to feel. I, I have no idea. All I want them to say is, mm-hmm, good. That's all I'm waiting for. Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath, Mr. Wilson. And then they put the stethoscope behind your back. I don't know what they're listening for, but all I want them to say is, mm-hmm, good. <laughs> if they say good, I know we good. All right? And, 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 so, and so after that process is done, what they will do is draw blood. That's right. The reason they draw blood, the medical people are looking like, bro, listen, you know what he's talking about. <laughs> the reason they draw blood is to check your, your panels, your levels. Uh, if, if you need to find out why your body is reacting a certain way or not reacting in a certain way. The results is in the blood. And so blood work provides essential insight into how your organs are functioning. Because the results are in the blood. If you want to find out why you are having fatigue issues, why are you just so tired all the time? Then the results are in the blood. You want to find out why your lower leg is in pain and it's numb all the time. The results. Why you can't keep food in your digestive tract and why you are having heartburn, why you are gaining and losing weight in an unhealthy way. What is my kidney Function. What is my liver function? Why am I having blood clots? Why 
Are my sugar levels so high? Why is my oxygen levels so low? All the results. Hormone levels. It's in the blood. If your job requires a blood test, you need to make sure that your blood is clean from THC. Amen, somebody. Why? Because the results will be and if you happen to take your children's urine to the restroom, talk Brother Wilson, what the doctor can do is take hair follicles so there's no getting around it. But it all results back to 